So this is the ending of this particular video. Maybe I'll cut it up into different parts, but the full video should deal with does testosterone grow scalp hair or is testosterone anabolic for hair growth on the scalp? One of those titles, just that general topic. Let's proceed. And essentially, I was talking about with the failures of topical antiandrogens, does it show that we need testosterone to some extent to stimulate the hair follicle via the androgen receptor? And the conclusion that I made was that no, I don't think that's completely necessary. And the biggest part of my argument essentially looks at the Dr. Hamilton's study on the effect of castration on the progression of male pattern baldness. You know, this is before puberty that we had boys before puberty who were castrated and men or adolescents after puberty who were castrated, right? You would see that the boys before puberty who were castrated, they didn't develop androgenetic alopecia. The men or adolescents after puberty who were castrated, they, the ones that actually had androgenetic alopecia or signs of it, it did not have any sort of progression. And in some cases, in the bald regions for those men, there was a regrowth of some hair, right? Some notable regrowth that occurred. So this shows that is testosterone really needed for hair growth, right? This isn't to say that all the people who don't want to transition in my audience, but who also want to keep their hair, this isn't to say that, okay, you men need to cut off your balls to keep your hair. No, this is to say that if you do something like use a topical anti-androgen to block the androgen receptor such that testosterone, DHT, or, an or pretty much any androgen cannot interact with that hair follicle via androgen receptor, that would mean that we're not going to see your hair quality diminish. Now, a good androgen receptor blocker has minimal to no transcriptional effects when it creates a complex with the androgen receptor. So I think we all know this, right? When DHT binds to the androgen receptor, it creates something called a DHT androgen receptor complex. This sort of thing, this sort of object, it goes into the cell and it interacts with DNA. And if you have the genes for androgenetic alopecia, it will activate those genes and cause the hair follicle, that particular hair follicle that the androgen receptor DHT complex has interacted with, that hair follicle will eventually miniaturize. So if whatever is blocking the androgen receptor doesn't do that or is causing minimal transcriptional effects, then that could be a good topical antiandrogen. There are so many setbacks right now with topical antiandrogens. We don't even know if RU58841 is completely effective, and we don't even know how safe it is because we don't have the full pub public phase 1, phase 2 human clinical trials. We have some things that we can look at that Prostracken has said about that. And in the case of pyrolitamide or KX826, which is being developed by Kintor Pharmaceuticals, we just saw that in its recent Chinese phase 3 clinical trial, it did not perform well against placebo. There was no statistical significance between the treatment group being the group of participants that got KX826 pyrolitamide versus the placebo group, the group of participants that got nothing. So for those of you who don't know, when we don't see a statistical significance between the placebo control group and the treatment group, that means the treatment probably isn't effective. And we've also seen setbacks with class cotterone, CBO301, such that it had a good six-month result, and then suddenly towards the 12th month result that we saw a decline in hair counts, right? That was kind of disappointing. At the time of making this video, we have GT229, a protac that is designed to dissolve or destroy completely the androgen receptor in the hair follicle. If that comes to market and it's proven as effective, that could be very, very great for pretty much everyone who's dealing with androgenetic alopecia. I could see it being an effective treatment for people who have severe so-called treatment-resistant androgenetic alopecia, and that would be to all the people who supposedly have uh, DUPA, the diffuse unpatterned alopecia, or other severe forms such as retrograde alopecia. But I think the future is looking bright when it comes to these treatments. And if you guys haven't started already, it's probably a good idea, if you're a man, to get on finasteride or dutasteride. 
you know, even if it's topical or oral, or maybe some people do both. Some people do topical dutasteride, oral finasteride, oral dutasteride, oral or topical finasteride, topical dutasteride. People do a mixture of things. I like to think about it like this. You have this thing called cryonic preservation, where people, when they die, they immediately freeze their bodies and then they're put into this like aluminum tank with the hopes that in the future, with medical advancements, scientific advancements, whatever, scientists can bring them out of this frozen state of ice, reanimate them, and remove any illnesses from their body that plagued them. By using finasteride, dutasteride, and other means to prolong your hair, keep it healthy, keep it in that antigen phase, you are essentially buying time for your hair to get to a point where maybe one day, maybe in the near future, 10 years down the line, we get an even more effective treatment for androgenetic alopecia, and all those hairs that you had can be reanimated, can be strengthened. This is the idea, right? That's why you take treatment to slow down the progression of this particular condition. If not, stop it completely, reverse it. That's why we do what we do. So this video has gone on long enough. Again, I might clip this part and make it into its own video, but the larger video that it comes from, uh, it has gone on long enough. So I want to say thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, I've covered this topic in a somewhat entertaining kind of way. Hopefully, you can understand my point that I don't think testosterone is necessary for scalp hair growth. We don't need it to such a significant extent because if you look at the effects of castration from the Hamilton study on people that have male pattern baldness, men that have male pattern baldness, they essentially revert, their hair comes back, right? Or if they had it before puberty, if they got their balls cut off before puberty, that's a crude way of putting it, but they never developed male pattern baldness. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I've talked long enough. I've heard my voice long enough. And thank you for being a part of this experience. All right, guys, see you in the next video. If you got this far to the video though, comment in the comment section below, blue balls. Like blue balls, like actual blue balls, like B-L-U-E, B-A-L-L-S. Funny, funny, right? Yeah, I'm being a, uh, a jokester here towards the end of the video because it's like, you know, I'm just kind of chatty right now. I'm gonna stop being chatty though. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace out.